You're watching Tag TV. From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Lipakshi and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of our country's diversity. Let's begin the show by taking you to Kerala where today you will get soaked in the vibrant festivities of Thrissur Puram that was recently observed with huge fanfare across the state. Regarded as the mother of all Purams, the festival was the brainchild of Sakhtan Tampuran, the Maharaja of Cochin from 1790 to 1805. Thrissur city of Kerala came alive with colourful festivities as one of the biggest annual carnivals of the state, Thrissur Puram was celebrated with huge fanfare. Held at Varakkum Natham Temple, situated in Thikkin Karu Medan of the city, the festival is observed in the Malayalam month of Medham on Puram day when the moon rises with the Puram star. Considered as the cultural highlight that towers all other festivals in Kerala, Various temples participate in the event to showcase the state's magnificent spiritual and cultural heritage. Two major and eight minor. The two major are Paramekau and Tiruvambadi. This festival has been described as one of the most spectacular sites by several agencies including the UNESCO. 15, the two major participants line up their procession with 15 decorated elephants and converge at the Sri Varasanadhan temple. One of the most spectacular sites is, is what is called as the Divine Darbar. It is a Kudi Kudamacham that is held at around 6 pm on the, on the southern side of Sri Varasanadhan temple. The Thrissur Puram is a grand assembly of gods and goddesses in and around Thrissur who are believed to make their visit to the Varakkamnathan temple premises on caparisoned elephants accompanied by grand ensembles of Chenda Melam and Panchvadyam. After this takes place the main attraction of the festival, the grand display of caparisoned elephants with ornamental fans and dazzling parasols in a wonderful ceremony called Kurumattam. It is the most colourful event of the Puram and this year the administration made sure that all arrangements were done properly for the security of the devotees who took part in the event in large numbers. It's, it's one of the best festivals in the world where you can see everything like you have the best fireworks, the group of elephants coming, uh, the best chanda, best music and best crowd, best people, everything comes together from Skrishupuram. The major highlight of the festival is Ilanji Thar Melam, considered as the world's largest live orchestra of percussionists that is known for its technical brilliance. The orchestra enthralls thousands of devotees with their bewitching performance of traditional instruments. As fireworks known as Vedikittu in Malayalam forms an important part of Kerala's temple festivals, in this festival too, temple grounds allot a specific area to burst the crackers and a makeshift shed is built to store them temporarily for a day or two. Which is basically um, a competition kind of festival between two temples, Tiruambari and uh, Parmekau. So uh, it's a great festival and has been there for years and well, due to Corona and Covid I guess this was um, slightly delayed in the year of 2020-2021 but after that this has uh, really flourished up and uh, this time it could be a, we are expecting it as a mega event um, uh, so you know, uh, because of holidays and people coming around. So, uh, wish everyone the best to enjoy this forum. Uh, happy to show forum 2023. 
believed to have been started by King Saktan Tamparan of the 18th century Kochi Kingdom, Thrissurpuram is a perfect mix of culture and spirituality. Today, with its popularity reaching a new high, it has been successfully in carving its own niche in the country's annual carnival calendar. Adanya itu nak pura kan? Kami ni dapat ada tiri kita tu. Adanya lari itu lah agak sangat semerut terani. Adanya kita pergi main tiri macam ni. Kita pergi ke dalam kain ni. Kita pergi ke arah tempat kita. Pagi lalu kita pergi ke arah. Nalat ayat. Semua perut kain ni asma teri berada tiri semua orang. Thousands of devotees braving the heat and humid weather throng the temple just to witness the ceremonies and rituals performed during the magnificent festival. Well, India has always been a land of great saints, assimilating in its fold various cultures and thoughts from time to time. It is a land where Sufism has not only flourished in its true spirit, but has also become a way of integrating different religious communities. A glimpse of it can be witnessed in different Sufi shrines of our country. So today we take you to a shrine on Gwalior city that has remained pious site for different religious communities for generations. The shrine of Raja Bakshar in Gwalior city of Madhya Pradesh has been acting as a sinecure of religious harmony for generations. That is because the shrine is visited by people of both Hindu and Muslim communities who have been offering their obeisance to the saint. Recently on the occasion of the Urs or death anniversary of the saint, both Hindus and Muslims visited the shrine and offered prayers to the saint according to their own rituals. It is believed that Baba Bakshar was a Hindu and was brought from Maharashtra Satara to Gwalior. The shrine was established 400 years ago by a Sindhya ruler. Legend goes that a Muslim king came to Baba Bakshar for fulfillment of a wish. After the king's wish was fulfilled, Muslims also started visiting Baba Bakshar to offer their obeisance to him. A Kavali session is organized every year where songs in praise of the saint are sung by musicians. This is a place where people come from all of the religions and they don't go away from here. They take the bread from here. They take the bread from here. करम है मैं बाबा साहब का और हम तो अपने बुजुर्गों के जमाने से यहाँ आ रहे हैं और मैं सलीम जनकार ग्वालियरी और ये हमारे बेटे समीर जनकार यहाँ हमेशा आते हैं और बाबा साहब हमें हर साल एक दिन मुनाकित करते हैं हमारे लिए हम बहुत बहुत शुक्रगुजार हैं India has remained as an epicenter of many such sites that strengthen the bond of secularism. People from all faiths rising above their ethnicities, castes, creeds and religiosity gather at these places and spread the message of peace and brotherhood for coming generations to follow. And now a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Hindu devotees thronged the banks of the Holy Ganges River in northern Varanasi city to take a dip and celebrate the Pushkaram festival which is dedicated to sacred rivers. Devotees and priests performed rituals to worship the river which is an important aspect of the life of people in India. In April 22, when the river was started, it started Ganga Pushkar. When it started, we were able to get rid of it. उसके उनके पास सार्ध त्रिकोटी देवता भी आता। The festival is celebrated as per the zodiac sign of 12 major rivers in the country and is hence observed once in every 12 years. 
The Ganges originates from the western Himalayas and flows south and east towards North India and then enters Bangladesh. It is Hinduism's most sacred river and the faithful believe that bathing in the waters can absolve people of their sins. The river and its tributaries are a vital water source for millions of people. Most of India's population can be found in the northern belt around the Ganges. Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh chaired the Shanghai Cooperation Organisation's Defence Ministers' Meet with eight member nations and Iran and Belarus as observer countries in New Delhi. The SCO is an eight-member political and security bloc that includes Russia and China. Singh hosted bilateral talks with Defence Minister of China, Iran, Kazakhstan and Tajikistan ahead of the Defence Minister's conclave. The meeting between Singh and China's Li Shangfu was the first between the defence ministers of the two countries since September 2020 when they held talks on the sidelines of a SCO meeting in Moscow. Singh is scheduled to hold talks with Russian defence minister Army General Sergei Shogu on the sidelines of the SCO meet. Indian actors Nawazuddin Siddiqui and Neha Sharma launched the trailer of the upcoming romantic comedy film Jogira Sara Rara in India's western Mumbai city. Siddiqui and Sharma were accompanied by the cast and crew of the film at the event where they discussed the story, the roles and posed for photographs. If you watch the film, there are a lot of laughter and a lot of family films. As I do in the film, it's not the same. Is it right? तो इसमें बच्चे बूढ़े हस्बैंड वाइफ सिस्टर ब्रदर सब आके इसको बैठ के एंजॉय कर सकते हैं। The film showcases the story of Jogi and Dimple, played by Siddiqui and Sharma, who, in the process of running away from getting married, end up falling in love with each other. Directed by Kushan Nandi, the film will release in theaters on May 12th. Sufism has entrenched itself at the center of cultural and spiritual life in India. Dargahs of Sufi saints in almost every part of the country are the rich reservoirs of this tradition. The Dargah of Baba Rupi Shah Peer in the city of Rohtak is one such place where devotees from all religions come and offer prayers to the Sufi saint who lit the path of virtue, wisdom and peace for his fellow beings and followers. Take a look. The shrine of Sufi saint Rupesh Shah Baba in the Rohtak city of Haryana has long remained a place of harmony and unity for people of all faiths. Every day devotees from across the state, irrespective of their religion, visit the shrine to offer prayers to the revered Sufi saint. The shrine of Baba Rupesh Shah Peer is a symbol of the pluralistic and syncretic culture of India. इसकी मान्यता जी सदियों से चली आ रही है यार ये वैसे तो इसको कहते हैं मोमंडे के मतलब कहते हैं लेकिन हमारे इन दो का इसके अंदर बड़ा ही वर्चस्व है और ये हमारे को चमत्कार दिखाते हैं हमारे जो कोई बहन से भाई बेह जाती है इस पर दूसरा डाना ना चढ़ाओ तो गड़बड़ होना और कुछ बहस में गड़बड़ होती है तो यहाँ पर बोल कर आते हैं मेरे साथ भी कई चमत्कार ऐसे हुए हैं जो मेरे को ना साक्षात दिखाया है हमारे को शादी का मैटर था मेरे मन में याद थी मैं प्रभु अगर अगर आपने ये काम कर दिया ना तो मैं मान जाऊंगा हाँ भाई तुम हो तो पंद्रह दिन के अंदर ही उन्हें ऐसा चमत्कार दिखा दिया मेरे पत्थर जान आई पिछले एक वो हो ये तो योग की थी मैंने पर वो दिखा दिया। It is believed that the Sufi saint fulfills the wishes of all those who come here from different corners of the country. People of all faiths have deep faith in the saint who throughout his entire life worked for the welfare of humanity. Irrespective of their faiths and religions, people visit the Darga to get the blessings of the legendary saint. The devotees believe that saint fulfills the wishes of all and nobody returns empty-handed from here. Hindu, Muslim, Pindit, everyone has a different kind of religion. So what is the meaning of the religion? The meaning of the religion is the same. We have been born from the time and we have been born from the time and we have been born from the time. यहाँ पर सिर्फ शुरू में ये मजार थी या कि दाल का पेड़ था शुरू में ये बाद में मासर दालों ने यहाँ बनवाया इसको इसका करवाया देख 
हम और इधर बहुत दिन से आते जाते हैं भैंस भी आती है दूध चढ़ाते हैं इधर हर बृहस्पतिवार को दूध लगाते हैं India has remained an epicenter of many such sites that strengthen the bond of secularism. People from all faiths rising above their ethnicities, castes, creeds and religiosity gather at these places and spread the message of peace and brotherhood for coming generations to follow. And now we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Ethiopian saxophonist Letarik Tilahu and his band once again serenaded fans at this year's Addis Jazz Festival. The two-day event was started in 2019 in hopes of reviving the golden era of the Ethio jazz genre with a new and young generation of music lovers. Tilahu and other Ethiopian jazz musicians believe this unique blend of Ethiopian sounds and American jazz can enjoy the fame it once did in Ethiopia even though it loved more fame abroad. Festival goers danced and cheered as their favorite artists took to the stage. Musicians like Jorga Mesfin say it is encouraging to see the young generation starting to enjoy Ethio jazz. The genre originated in the 1950s when Nurses Nelbandian created a fusion of traditional Ethiopian sounds and Western music. Many believe that it is one of Ethiopia's greatest innovations. This robot security guard is now on patrol in Switzerland. The autonomous, two-wheeled robot was developed by Ascento, a robotic startup from ETH Zurich, and it has been acting as a robot guard for Swiss security firm Securitas AG for over six months. The Ascento robot is a combination of legs and wheels with a head that houses the computer, battery sensors, and cloud-based AI. It can navigate rough terrain, bumps and even go up and down stairs. The thermal camera detects people and vehicles, while the 360-degree camera captures images of the surroundings. The robot can also communicate via a live feed with a backup operator in a control center. The robot will produce automatic daily security reports and can be rented by the R to complement a security company's human guard team. While pricing depends on many factors, the company says it would be less than a human guard. Bolaji Fatai has never set foot in an airplane, but that has not stopped him from building his own remote-controlled model aircraft from trash and sending it soaring over the sprawl and chaos of Lagos, Nigeria's commercial capital. On a recent cloudy day, the single propeller plane withstood crosswinds high above a sandy football field and swooped low over the heads of onlookers in Overon Shoki, the poor neighborhood where Fetai lives in the east of the city. I started this when I was seven. Like, I started picking things around, making some little projects, and even I built cars before. But my focus was on airplanes because whenever I see airplane fly, gives me a very overwhelming joy. He starts by dusting and cutting styrofoam into his desired shape. He bought the propeller and remote control in a shop, but constructed the body, wings, tails and fin from pieces of recycled styrofoam gathered in dump sites and held together with sticky tape. The wingspan is about one meter. He saved money for two years before he could buy the propeller and remote control. Fatai's labor of love is now propelling his dreams. A tech company gave him an internship after he was spotted piloting the plane, an important first step towards his goal of becoming an aeronautical engineer.
From space launches and operations to inventing technologies to developing commercial satellite launch facilities, the velocity of the Indian space journey has been exponential and second to none. India's Space Exploration Agency, ISRO, which dominates the Indian space industry, has led successful milestones for the country as well as other countries by launching its satellites. Recently, ISRO's launch vehicle Mark III successfully placed 36 satellites of OneWeb, an Indian-owned UK based company completing the first generation low earth orbit constellation take a look 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 The Indian space story began in the little known fishing hamlet Tumba in India's southern state of Kerala in the 1960s from space launches and operations to inventing technologies to developing commercial satellite launch facilities, the velocity of the Indian space journey has been exponential and second to none. The Indian space program has developed powerful and comprehensive standard operating procedures from launch to landing. India's Space Exploration Agency, ISRO, which dominates the Indian space industry, has led successful milestones for the country as well as other countries by launching their satellites. Recently, ISRO's launch vehicle Mark III successfully placed 36 satellites of OneWeb, an Indian-owned UK-based company, completing the first-generation Low Earth Orbit constellation. Let me take this opportunity to thank once again the entire ISRO community uh, for their uh, work towards making this rocket one of the best in this class and it actually increased the confidence on us on this rocket GSLV Mark III for taking up the uh, Gaganyan which is going to be flying on this rocket as well. More recently, ISRO's reusable launch vehicle RLV successfully landed, bringing India closer to the dream of its own space plane and sustainable space exploration. The technique adopted to launch the vehicle was first in the world. A winged body was carried by a helicopter to an altitude of 4.5 kilometers and released for an autonomous landing on the runway. ISRO successfully demonstrated its innovative and cost-effective technologies which have made it part of an elite space club. India, with the support of ISRO, has emerged as a leader in third-party launch services. India has earned a massive revenue of 279 million USD till now by launching satellites for 34 countries by ISRO. India's space industry's role has been instrumental in developing several application areas including weather forecasting, navigation, oceanographic studies, disaster management, and agriculture. Experts say that this Indian step will soon prove to be a game changer. The opening of the space economy to private participation in all phases of activities has ushered in an era of growth, innovation, and accelerated investment in the sector. In line with India's self-reliant initiative, India will soon be launching its first ever at Manirbar human flight, Kaganyan. The objective of the project is to take a three-man crew into orbit for five to seven days and bring them back to Earth safely. India allocated 137 billion to the Department of Space in 2022 to 2023 for the smooth running of all of its missions. As per a report by the Indian Space Association and Ernst & Young, the satellite manufacturing sector is expected to grow from 2.1 billion in 2020 to 3.2 billion in 2025 while launch services will grow from 567.4 million in 2020 to 1 billion in 2025. For the broader interest of people all over the world, India has forged space project collaborations with the United Nations, BRICS nations, as well as with Israel, NASA, and the European space. India's breakthrough technological work has resulted in success for India's space sector.
Government initiatives and reforms are on track to be game changers for India's space sector, further expediting the industry's growth. India created history by becoming the first country to enter the orbit of the Red Planet in its first attempt. The pioneering mission, Mangalyaan, was the most economical mission ever to Mars. Its budget was about 75 million which cost only 11% of NASA's Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution mission, MAVEN. The Indian space spirit is determined and limitless. Experts say the day is not far when India's lunar exploration mission will be a success. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia.anin.com. I'm your host, Lipakshi, and it's goodbye from the entire production team. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.